Tonight, we're, we have a huge, huge topic. We'll be talking about communication, specifically in the realm of dating. And this is ginormous. I mean, it's, it's huge. And there's no way we can cover every little bit of it. And so have patience with me as we work our way through and we whittle it down to just a few things I want us to focus in on. But as I was thinking about this evening, it made me think of a story because I like stories. And quick question for you, does anybody know what this is? A pool with a cover on it. It's very good. So growing up, part of my time I lived in Michigan, and out of all the places we lived, it was the northernmost, and that's where my parents decided to get a pool, which is kind of crazy, so you could use it like two months during the year. But anyway, we had a pool in our backyard, and during the winter, you have to kind of cover that up with a black plastic. And at the spring, you come and you pull everything off as you open the pool up, and it's just covered with slime and gross. I mean, it's disgusting. And my dad, who was just a, a very resourceful and fun guy, where everybody else saw disgusting and gross, he saw a slip and slide. Now our house, we lived up kind of on a hill, and it would drop down through the woods, and then there was a scummy pond at the end. So my dad, is that he dreams big. He's thinking, I think we have enough plastic that we could run this all the way like through trees and have big banks and get all the way down to that scummy pond. That would be really awesome. But before I start, I gotta make sure that it actually is gonna work. So he takes the first section of plastic and he lays it down. And now this is the type of neighborhood where everybody knows what's going on. And so there's like, oh, the Berkeys are doing something. And neighborhood families are gathering together. Oh, I heard it's going to be like a major slip and slide. Oh, wow. And so everybody is gathered around. And so the dad has the, the wonderful plastic laid out. And then he's running some water down it. Then he realizes at the very end, like it just would keep running, you know, that'd be bad. And so he throws down some four by four uh, wood down there and builds up a lip so that it pools up. So it's a nice little pool to stop your momentum because he's thinking of everything. And of course, me, I don't know about you as a kid, A, this is my house, right? <laughs> this is my dad. Therefore, the first one who should be able to go should be me. And so I'm like, I got, I got it. And dad's like, wait, wait, wait. Now the people who showed up to watch, because we had a pool as well, uh, they had these things, do you know, you know, a floaty. And somebody had brought one over that was shaped like this. Okay. And so dad has the water down. It's going and it looks really great. And I can't, I can't wait any longer. It, it has to be go time. And so I come sprinting through, pushing people out of the way, and the poor person who's holding that like this and smiling, I grab it out of their hands, and I jump, and I hang on to the neck, and, and it is awesome. I mean, I am moving. Trees, hit the water. The water doesn't stop me. My ride now is just getting started because the, the, the little four by fours that he had built up a nice wall act like a ramp and now launch me <laughs> into the air. And as I'm going, I'm hugging that, that bottleneck tighter and tighter and tighter. And I don't really know what happened next other than I'm on my back on top of some other stuff and I, can, I look up and I see every family <gasps> doing that, right? And so I start moving and they're like, oh, he's alive. And then every family like, come on. You know, the Berkeys are hurting children again. Let's go. And so the only person who got to ride the slip and slide that day was me. Uh, I got really, really mad because as soon as I started moving, uh, my sister, you know, she was so loving, just pointed and starts laughing and making fun of me. And I'm bruised and scraped up. But I tell you that to tell you this is I made some assumptions that day. And there was some lack of clarity, and there was a result. The assumptions I made is that I should be the very first person to ride on that, and there was no need for any test to be done. It had to be me. It was go time. Let's do this. And the second thing is I assumed that a pool raft was supposed to be used, which my dad never had that in mind. But I assumed since they were there, of course, hello. The other thing, there was some lack of clarity. My dad just says, wait, wait. But he never said for, like, how long, you know? Well, not yet. No, wait, okay. How about now? No, wait, okay. How about now? No, wait. He didn't really, you know, he could have been a little bit more clear with that. And putting those things in, into practice, the result was I ended up getting hurt. I got injured. Other people were terrified, and they ran away. And this is so very true of communication. 
See, when we make assumptions and when there's lack of clarity, most especially within the dating realm, the result will be injury and hurt. It just will be. And so as we're looking tonight at Christian communication in a dating environment, that helped me narrow it down a little bit. And I want us to look at at a few things. But to do that, we have to remember we redefine dating a little bit. Not just, not this thing of trying to find a spouse. We, We looked at this. It's a process used by God for His glory where you and others are encouraged to refine and transform into His image while growing in depth of relationship with another person through a series of dates. It's a process that God wants to use for His glory. And it's pretty cool to think about that God can be glorified through dating. That's kind of awesome. And communication in dating, that's part of that, and that God can be glorified through how you communicate. But not only that, it's not just for His glory, it's for Him to begin to mold and shape us to continue that process to look more and more and more like His Son. It's really pretty cool. So we usually just think it's just about finding somebody to hang out with, maybe get engaged to, and maybe get married. But reality is, behind all that and deeper than that, is God is looking, how can I use this for my glory and your transformation? And it's really kind of a cool thing. We got it from those verses, but we're going to look at three verses. We'll probably end up looking at four. But Christian communications, there's three things in dating that I want to make sure that we are crystal clear on. And as you're looking these verses up, we have our, our ninja, uh, beautiful woman here, Aaron, coming around to make people read, or get people to read, being Colossians and Ephesians. And think of this. I don't know if this blows your mind or not. But if God can be glorified through dating, and if God can be glorified through Christian dating, If we go about that in a godly way, he receives glory, praise. It's loving him really, really, really well. The thing that blows my mind is this. That as we go about these things correctly, God is glorified. The same as the glory he would receive as I stand here and and teach from his word to y'all. The same as if Billy Graham is in a stadium with thousands and thousands of people, if his heart is set on God and he's being obedient uh, to what God has laid before him, God is glorified. And it's funny to think about how you communicate in the dating process that God can receive glory through that. That just blows my mind away that everything I do, I can bring glory to God. And that's what I'm designed to do. So Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Does somebody have that? Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. I'm so sorry. I have to have you start over again. I'm just not really sure. What was that first thing? Do not lie to each other. Oh, why not? Since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Oh, okay. So because we're a new creation, we shouldn't lie. So that's talking to Christians, to believers. So truth is a big thing here. The first thing that we need, and you're like, well, duh, Todd. But listen. We talked last week, you know, remember the whole like, oh, I just love strawberry milkshakes and, and, oh, me too, because you think that'll make you look better in that person's eyes. And so we're usually not fully truthful in these dating relationships. And we're like, oh, it's just a small thing. It's no big deal. But what that reveals is the amount of untruthfulness is like it shows you have distrust in God. If she knows I doesn't, that I don't really like strawberry milkshakes, she may not want to date me. She may not want to continue to pursue uh, me and be in a relationship with me. And we can't be married. And that's who I want. And so God doesn't know. I know better. So I'm going to lie about liking strawberry milkshakes. Or I'm going to lie by omission and not confess the fact that I do have cats. And really, that's not a big deal. It's the truthfulness. Because I don't trust that God is sovereign in this area. We don't think of it that way, do we? It's just a small white little lie, right? We don't think about that's manipulating the situation for your desired outcome as opposed to his glory. Second thing here is Ephesians. Oh man, I already gave it away. But that's okay. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. Uh, Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things in him 
who has had Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Fantastic. That's a very... What translation is that, actually? It, it's it's enfolded in loved, and I figured it was an amplified thing. But speak truth in love. Most of your translations will come through, and it was in there, too. I love how it folded. It, it was fantastic. So we're supposed to speak truth, but we're supposed to speak truth in love. Now, that might be hard. Some people might be like, that's just not how I'm wired. Blow and go. I just, I, I see it. I say what it is. Pfft, job done. I'm out. And we take no considerations for the feelings of those that we're communicating with. And then we say, well, that's just how I'm wired. And I say, dating is a process that God wants to use for His glory in your transformation. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is you, that's part of your life that needs transformation. Think before you speak. Know your audience. Know how it's going to be received. And it happens all the time. I mean, it happened today. I got to have a conversation. I'm thinking, this could go bad real quick. How can I articulate this in a way where the person I'm talking with is going to understand I'm not mad. They're already going to feel bad. How do I come up? How can I use my words correctly so that there's love lavished in here, yet truth is still communicated? Some of us, though, we're just not wired that way, and we try to hide behind that. I'm just not wired that way. Well, guess what? You have a spirit who's been given to you who is wired that way. Truth in love. How about Ephesians 4, uh, 1 through 3? Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, employ you to walk... Okay, i got to stop you. Can you read that again? Go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you again. It's okay. Therefore I... The prisoner of the Lord. The what? The prisoner. The pri oh, Man, who's writing this? You guys know who wrote Ephesians? Paul. And he's referring to us as a prisoner of the Lord. I mean, come on, he's Paul. He, of all people, should get to do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, right? I mean, he, he's Paul. And he says, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Could you start again? And, and I won't interrupt, I don't think. <laughs> Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, Employ you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling in which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness. I'm sorry, I have to stop you. With all what? Humility and gentleness. Oh, wow. Okay, go ahead. With patience. Wait, what? With, with patience. If I'm not just blunt and direct and rip that band-aid off, they're not going to understand. Wait, pa okay, okay, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Showing tolerance for one another in love. Being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I'm supposed to be what about what? Dilla what? Be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit. Oh, I'm supposed to be diligent about preserving unity. Huh. For me, as I look at that, I look at this as a, you're supposed to be intentional. It's action-based you know, or active-based. And we get that. If you look at diligent, you can become through and, and be translated a couple different ways. Taking pains, making every effort, and unity. Here's the deal. Assumptions and poor communication amongst dating people breaks down unity. You see it all the time. We all like each other. It's great. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? You want to go out sometime? And you're like, well, no. And now all of a sudden there's division, right? And now I'm like, oh, awkward. Not going to talk to you. Have to avoid you. And then if we really allow our, our flesh to get a hold of us, and we're like, yeah, I totally asked her out. She's like totally like stuck on herself. Like you should never, ever. And all of a sudden this yucky, nasty division starts happening. Especially in a ministry like ours. We need to be diligent about preserving the unity. So, these are the three things I want us to think about in, in, with communication, within a dating context. We need to be truthful. We need to look to speak that truth in love and we need to be intentional. And honestly, we don't see that modeled very well. We don't. So what does it look like? like? What does this actually look like? First thing with assumptions. We've got to knock this off. Knock it out. No more. And you know what I'm talking about with assumptions. Like, well, I kind of think maybe uh, she's into me. And you go you talk to your friends. Like, do you think she's into me? And they're like, well, definitely she's into you. And you're like, oh, yeah, she is into me. You're right. Oh, I wonder what our kids would look like. <laughs> Man, it would be really, really great. Oh, 
I can just see it now. We'll probably have three. Two boys and a girl. Well, now hang on. I've seen two boys sometimes, and they fight a lot. So maybe boy, girl, boy. That would be great. I think their names should be. And we start going this way because we start just drawing these assumptions, nothing based off of truth. We never even have a conversation with the person yet. What is, what is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 say? Finally, brethren, whatever is true. I'm sorry, what? Whatever is true. Whatever is what? True. Okay, I, I just want to make sure we understood that word. Okay, whatever is true. Okay. Whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is the good of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Do what on those things? Dwell. Dwell. Park your mind on those things. What was the first thing on that list again? I, I, I forgot it. Start with a t and then a roo. What? <laughs> Whatever's true. Whatever's true. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, assumptions just totally ignore what truth is. And we have to get away from this. Whether it's ourselves. I mean, I was guilty of this all the time. I could... I can step into an elevator, make eye contact with a person, and be like, wow, yeah, I think there's something there. And by the time we're at the third floor, I've not said a word, and I have. I've gone through, like, I think we'll get married in, like, in a year and a half from now. And I, nothing's happened, but I've, this whole fantasy life has just been like that. And then she leaves, and I'm heartbroken. Like, how can you leave me? How dare you? You were so good together. Come back. <laughs> And then you actually say that, and she looks at you weird, and it doesn't work. So, um, but not just us. When others, if we seek their counsel, if you don't know, I don't know. Is he into me? I don't know. Well, what has he told you? It's, I don't know. It's not for me to, why don't you go talk to them? Don't just assume, well, I think, you know, I can, he wore he wore a blue shirt, and he knows that blue is your favorite color. So I'm thinking that he may, he may really be, oh, you do? I think he did wear a blue shirt. You're so right. And it's really my second favorite color, but that's close enough. I think he probably wore it for me. Oh, I, I think so. He had blue jeans on, too. Oh, this is a sign. This is so good. Yes! Can you see some dangers here? And I exaggerate a little bit, but I know there's a multitude of people who suffer from this. For example, this is what it does not look like. A guy or girl, whoever you're, 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 you're sitting there, if I go out and have coffee with a lady, it does not equal engagement. But many of us, oh, she said yes to coffee. She said yes to coffee. Oh, yes. Play cool, man. Play it cool. Yeah. And then you show up and you have the coffee and it went well and you're just like, you're skipping out of there. Woo! No, that is not at all what that means. But we allow our minds to begin to not dwell on. What was that word again? Do you remember the first one that started with a T and with a Roo? True, whatever truth, okay. It also doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean, oh, we went out, we had coffee, it was great. Now we're, we're definitely boyfriend, girlfriend. Hold hands. Because I know he likes me. Doesn't mean that. What does it mean? Fist bump. <laughs> we had coffee. High five. I've gotten to know you better. That's what that means. Step back so when you're asking somebody, hey, let's go have coffee, you don't need to be like, oh, it's going to end in marriage. You can just, what do you think? If they say yes and you go, what does that mean? Not that they're yours. You don't have right to them. Oh, I saw him first, girl. You do not start looking at him. Mm -mm. No! Fist bump! That's what it means. So here's where the danger comes into this. And you're wondering, how does it deal with communication? I'll, I'll get you here in a second. Here's your communication line. Okay? You've had coffee. You've talked a little bit. But when we make these assumptions, all of a sudden we're thinking, this is marriage, and boom! Inside of us, we begin to have this strong emotional connection to this person that we've never really had that deep of a conversation. And we're basing that based on assumptions. I had coffee with him. You did? Was he wearing blue? Yeah, blue jeans. Oh, it's because he knew it's your second favorite color, you know? And yes, and so all of a sudden, internally, we make these things so intense. And this is incredibly unhealthy, which we will look at 
if you can't already tell. What we should be gunning for is something that looks like this. As communication, as we're communicating, as, as that gets deeper and deeper and deeper, that coincides and we allow our emotions then to fall in line with that. This is a much healthier way. But what does clear and intentional communication look like in the dating process? I would like to introduce to you two amazing people. Are you ready? Boom. I think we'll call one Jim and the other Pam, because that's what I have them in their things. You guys think that I'm doing that for some other thing, but we'll call them Jim and Pam. What does clear and intentional communication actually look like? Hey, Pam, how has your week been? I, I do this because I'm a visual learner, and this will help me as we go on. Hey, Jim, the week's been great. How about you? Oh, Todd, this is really lame. Oh, it gets even lamer. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, I just wanted to say that I think it's really cool how you always reach out to new people at Junction. I didn't know Jim and Pam were here, but there they are. But you're, you're always reaching out to new people at Junction. You do such a great job of making people feel welcomed here. I think that's an amazing gift you have. As Todd says, you know, you're imaging God well. Oh, Jim, I don't know what you're talking about. Blush. <laughs> but thanks for the compliment. I, you know, honestly, I really do. I just want people to know how valuable they are. Well, like I said, I think you do a great job. I also always enjoy our conversations at Junction, too. Say, I was wondering if you'd like to grab a cup of coffee sometimes so that I can get to know you a little better. I bolded, I underlined, what's his intention? Has he made it very clear? Okay, so would it be right for Pam to go like, oh my goodness, he asked me out. He asked me out. What should I wear? What's his favorite color? What's his second favorite color? Blue? Okay. But we do this. <laughs> sure, that would be great. She's letting know that that would be great. Pretty simple, isn't it? But let me come back to this. I, I would love this, okay? I, I would love it. You women, let me talk to you for a brief moment. If a guy gets the nerve and the courage to say, hey, um, uh, all awkward, and you got to know it's awkward for the guy. If you think it's awkward for you, you got to know as they're sitting there, there's vomit wanting to come up. They're probably pitting up. You just, it's, it's just really, you know, a lot goes into this. They get the courage and, the, hey, do you, do you want to go, do you go out? Can I take you out and um, get you me food? You know, if they, get, if they get that much out, okay, I would love it. I would love it if you would sit there and say, well, man, I'm really flattered, but why me? <laughs> you think I'm joking. But I'm, I'm serious. What have, what have you just communicated to that guy? Do you even know me? What is it that you like? Are you just infatuated with my hair? Like, what... What is it about me that you find... I'm just curious because out of all the women that are here, you decide that you want to ask me out. I'm just curious. And I don't mean this in a, a mean way, but why? <laughs> but let me ask you what would happen if the guy goes, well, what? Because I see you at Junction all the time. And whenever there's a new person who comes in, like you, you are so quick to jump over to where they are, to introduce them, to get them plugged in. And that's just really cool. I say you stay afterwards and you help put chairs back. And not only do you do that, but you're talking with other people and like there's just joy that follows you around. Now you're the female and you're going, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. I, I would like that. Do you see a difference there? But you have to guard your own hearts, man. You can't wait for everybody else to be doing that for you. So I would love it. Guys would not. Guys are like, Todd, seriously, knock it off. But guys, be prepared. Because if the only reason you're asking somebody out is because you think they're just, I think you're hot. I think you're pretty. I think like we would, our hands would fit together really good because I've been watching like your hands. They look like they little shape like my hands. And... And if you're the woman and that's what they're coming up with, you know, I, no, thank you. I would love it. I serious, I would love it. So guys, be prepared if you do ask a girl. Be, and you should be prepared. Honestly, you should be prepared. 
And if you don't have a good answer for that question, why in the world are you asking the person out? Oh, so it's okay to ask that. Yeah. Okay. I think it is. I do it all the time. I just want to know. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think, I, I, think it's, I think there's great wisdom in there. Better yet, though, if the guy would trump by saying, hey, because of the fact I see these things in you, I was wondering, you don't have to ask the question. He's already answered it because he's being intentional. Oh, communication's looking really good. Sure, that would be great. Where's the communication line right now? Back in this scenario. Remember, I see you at Junction. You're always making people feel good. You know, is this one that's just staying really surfacey, or is this one that's starting to go down? Where, where is this? Or are we really, really connecting? Where are we? Which would you say? You sure? I mean, it was, he made a great observation. Are you sure? Stick to your guns. Are you sure? Okay, good. Yeah. That's, that's, all, that's all the more. That's who you are. You've made an observation, and, and it's, yeah, I see the, this characteristic in you, and I think that's really cool. I, I want to get to know you better, because if, if there's more to you than what I see right here that falls in line with this, wow. Wow. And holy smokes, guys, if you respond that way, the girl's going to be like, who are you? This is incredible. You want to know me. But where should the emotional line be? But when we make our wonderful, it should be right there, but when we make our assumptions, it goes here. And we're in for a big problem. Hey, Pam, I know this is the fifth time I've asked you about getting coffee, uh, but do you want to go get coffee this week with me? <laughs> Please? You stack chairs really nice, yes. And I think that you do a really good job of answering questions, yes. And you have a really nice laugh. Um, what else can I tell you about you? Um, it, it's my fifth time of asking you. You've said no for five times. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you're coming around for the fifth time, it's probably a no for a reason. You know, it's just not going to happen. But maybe she's not getting a clue. Jim, I, I've got to admit, you are persistent, and that is a great characteristic. But I don't see, but I don't see our friendship extending beyond Junction. Ouch, right? It's the fifth time. This is, wouldn't be, I wouldn't recommend this as your first response to it. If there's a sixth time, say, hey, Todd, can you come over here? Because he's creeping me out. It's like stalkerish. And then I'm happy to say, hey, Jim, dude, listen. <laughs> this is truth in love. There's nothing mean in this statement. It's intentional, it's truth, and there's love. <coughs> but let's say that you guys, actually Jim and Pam, make it to coffee. Pam, thanks so much for getting coffee with me. I really like learning more about you. And insert, maybe you would actually want to actually say something that you learned. Like, if you're like, take a picture of that. That's good, Todd. That's golden. <laughs> hey, Pam, I mean, <laughs> my name's Nicole. Oh! <laughs> you laugh like this doesn't happen. How long of a conversation did you have, Aaron, with that guy? How many times on the, on the phone did he talk to you? He said, yeah, Tina, I'm now ready to tell you. Like, it was like four or five times, right? He just continued. He just, have your notes in order, know who you're having coffee with, you know? But in case you're sitting here taking a picture, thinking this is great, and you made it to coffee, and you've had the coffee, and then after the coffee, you're sitting there. Man, I really like learning more about you. I really love the fact, or I really liked the fact that you desire to one day go overseas and do medical missions, and that's why you're spending so much time and energy uh, getting the degree that you're getting. I think that's really cool because so many other people would just be doing that for money. I think that's, just, I think that's amazing. Well, gosh, Todd, that's really deep to get into a conversation over coffee. Yeah! We'll get to that here in just a few minutes. You should not just keep it up here. So do you like the weather? How's the traffic in College Station? A lot better in Houston, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you like green cars better, or do you like blue cars better? Because blue's my second favorite color. You know, whatever that may be. <laughs> anyway, so Pam, thanks so much for getting coffee with me. I really like learning more about you, some specific. I was wondering if I could take you out on a date sometime. Do you see it's bolded and underlined? Do you see there's, in, there's you're stating your intentions? Do you see that? Okay, this isn't model all the time. We're just hanging out. Want we'll to hang out some other time? Come on, pretty little thing. You want to just hang out again? You want to just keep hanging? 20 years later, you want to keep hanging out? I mean, no. Coffee was great. It sounds like God is doing some amazing things in your life. I'm flattered that you'd ask me out on a date, 
but I'm going to have to pass. Ooh. From what you shared, it seems to me that your passions and calling are headed in a different direction than mine. Is that me? No. It's truthful. It's not that I, I think you're the worst person in the entire world. It's not that, you know, I, I really enjoyed debating whether green cars or blue cars were better. Um, <laughs> you really kind of blew it, guy. <laughs> you're not, you're just being truthful. Pretty simple. See, that's where it ends then, right? You started, you're like, okay, we're being intentional, we're being truthful in love, but you just started. Your yellow line is right, right up there. So, yes, that would sting, but you're not going to be like in the corner eating tubs and tubs of bluebell ice cream, overcoming the hurt and sorrow. Because you kept things in line. As opposed to this, I mean, do you see? Are you seeing the issue? It ended here, but your emotional connectivity is already down here, and now you're like in a tailspin. Oh my goodness, my life is over. And you're like, listen, you guys had coffee, right? Yeah. One coffee? The only one. How long did it last? Well, 30 minutes. She had to cut it short. I can see why. And you talked to her how many times at Junction? Twice. That's not healthy. You should be at that point and be able to say, okay. And that preserves the unity. The cool thing is, I will say this, if something like that does happen and you come back into Junction, I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage the person who's saying, no, I'm not interested, thanks, but no, no, thanks. Um, knowing that it's going to be awkward, you just know it, and that for the other person to show up, that that takes some great courage of them, it, it's better to not do this. Oh, there, here you are. <laughs> it's okay to be like, hey, it's good seeing you again. Did you have a good week? Cool, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. It's awkward, you kept it short, but you're being diligent to preserve unity. Man, but let's just say things went great. Coffee was great. And it was so cool to hear about God, how God is working in you. I'm totally flattered that uh, people really say this. I'm totally flattered. I'm totally <laughs> flattered that you'd ask me out. And I'd really like that. Are you clear? Are you intentional? Oh, maybe. I've got nothing better to do on Friday. <laughs> no. This is really looking good. See, happy face. <laughs> Although that color doesn't look so happy, but let's call it happy face. <laughs> Here there's danger coming. You know it's lurking. Man, so you go out on your date. Pam, thanks for spending time with me tonight. I really enjoyed, again, the same, same thing. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed getting to know, getting to know, getting to know. Because remember, in this process, it is not just about, I'm, here I am, Sophie. It, this is really about getting to know the other individual. I mean, that's, the dating process, getting to know more and more and more and more and more. Am I seeing characteristics in this person that I want to continue to invest in? Really enjoy getting to know more about you. I'm not certain how you felt about things, but honestly, I felt, uh-oh, like we were probably best suited to be friends. Ow! It isn't that there's anything wrong. It just seems like we're headed in slightly different directions. Awkward. Yes. Hurtful? A little. But clear? Intentional? Direct? With love? <laughs> Had you stopped asking me if my second favorite color was blue, you know, for the 23rd time during dinner, maybe we would have got... No, you, you're... Good stuff. It ends and... Again, there's not... Your world does not stop... Bluebell stock does not continue to rise because you're diving into. <laughs> here, are you seeing what's happening? Here's how it should be, but it's impacting you way down here. And people are just looking at you weird. Pam, thanks for spending time with me tonight. I really enjoy getting to know more about you. I'm not certain how you felt about things, but I really, I'd really like to keep pursuing you. Hearing more about your passion for, you probably shouldn't just say blank if you're reading your script. Hearing more about whatever that is really excited me because that's something I'm passionate about. I really enjoy talking with you and enjoy the questions you ask. Anyway, the, those are my thoughts. What are yours? I mean, do you see, this is not rocket science, but so few people do this. It's a shame. Are the intentions? I really want to keep pursuing you. We've had time together in, in a group setting here at Junction. I've kind of gotten to know you there. We had coffee. And I was just, ah, I was amazed by that. We've now had a date together. And this is, I'm just more and more amazed 
Not by your hair color, your hairstyle, well, that's nice. But these are, this is who you are. This is where I, I see more and more who you are, and I'm excited by that. I want to continue to pursue that. Whew. Well, that's a little forward. No! You're being intentional. And what are your thoughts? Well, I've never really talked. Nobody's ever asked me that question before. I don't know how I'm supposed to, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Jim, thanks for taking me out tonight. I have no doubt that God is in the process of doing something great in you. I know, honestly, this is going to be awkward, but I think we're best suited as friends. I loved hearing about your passion for blank, but I don't believe that really lines up with the passions God has placed inside of me. I really am thankful and appreciate your willingness to get to know me better. Now, here's the funny thing. If God means diddly squat to you, none of this is going to work for you. But if you're approaching dating as this is all for God's glory and about Him transforming me more and more into His Son's image, and that is my burning passion, then this works really, really well. So there it ends. And again, you're not devastated. It hurts, but it's not forever. Here, bad things happen. Hey, Jim, thank you for taking me out tonight. I have no doubt that God is in the process of doing something great in you. I'm really flattered that you would want to continue to pursue me. And it seems like God has wired us in a similar way. So I'd really like to continue seeing you. Direct? Clear? Yes? This means yes. This means no. This means Todd, keep giving us more slides. <laughs> Man, moving down, still got that happy but kind of weird colored face. Again, here, you're, you're heading for trouble. You're just heading for trouble. God honoring communication is truthful, it's spoken in love, it's intentional. It's not rocket science, but so few of us do this, and so few of us actually see this lived out. Address the biggies early. Duh, Todd. But what are the biggies? I don't know what they are for you. But if you back up a couple weeks and you remember me coming over here and saying, I'm assuming some things about you before we move on to dating. I'm assuming that you are a believer. I am sure, I'm assuming that you are actually active in your faith. I am assuming that the things that you're learning and growing in, that you're trusting God, and I am assuming that you are content. I'm assuming those things. And if that is true of you, the biggie, the most biggest thing, you should be looking for somebody who also is believing, active, trusting, and content because then you're in a really good place. But some people are like, man, I don't know. Talk about like faith over coffee. Like, it's like too deep. It's not my style. Why not? I'm not saying you bear your life story but you should be able to have an understanding of where their passions. Easy thing. Hey, tell me about your family. I mean, tell, tell me how awkward this is. Hey, tell me about your family. Like, where'd you grow up? What'd you, what'd, what'd you guys get? Brother or sisters? Oh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Awesome. Hey, I'm just curious. I'm curious. Like, growing up, was church like part of y'all's family? Well, no, it wasn't. Okay, that's fine. It's not a red flag. It's just, oh, we've just made it. <gasps> Did you see that? We just went from talking about family to... Church got inserted in faith. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we're on the brink of asking a hard question. So, hey, tell me about your story. How did God captivate you? What do you mean by captivate me? I used to love to ask that question. So, when did God captivate you? What do you mean by that? When, 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 did, when did I get saved? Well, I was 12.32 years of age. And I believed, and that was it. Well, okay. But when did he captivate? That, that's what I want to know. I love Jesus. He is my life. And I want to be yoked with somebody else who loves Jesus, and that is her life. I'm so thankful that I am. And so this is a big deal. When was he, well, what I mean by captivated, like, when did you really be like, dude, there's more to this than just being saved later, like where you want to have a life that you're living unto him in all areas of your life? Tell me about that. Well, I, I just, I don't... When you can't answer that question, I don't have to sit there and say, like, hmm, you're not good enough for me. I can now go back to my Jim and Pam conversations and say, I just I think it's probably best that we're friends. Another great question. What has God been teaching you in the last month? Uh, like, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you? God? Last month? <laughs> What has he been teaching you? 
Uh, I, I, I don't understand the question. Well, kind of like this. Last month, what he's been really been working on me is I've realized that I haven't been quite as intentional and direct in my conversations in the past. And so God has really been working on me in that and that I really want to be better at that. So he's really been convicting me that I haven't been obedient in those things because I've, I've always just kind of shied away from that. And that really isn't loving him well. So that's something that he's really been working on me on. So that, that's kind of the thing that I, that I mean by that. And I kind of figured that out by reading Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. If you really want to know the specifics, huh? A great indication, early on at the coffee, you don't have to travel down further and further and further and further until you have this great emotional connectivity, and then you find out that they don't even really care too much about who God is and who Christ is and what he has done for them. And now you're like, well, what do I do? Have them early on. None of that is awkward. Zero of it is awkward. Funny thing is, if you're going to ask the questions, be ready to answer those questions. But if this isn't real for you, whatever your biggie is, but I would strongly encourage that that BATC is good. Because this is what happens if you don't, you, you continue just to kind of play around. Well, we both like tennis, we both like golf, and man, we just both like to go to the movies, and we both like even mini golf, and we like like, man, we... we, we you won't believe this, but we both like Oreo cream pie. And you won't even believe this. Man, the other night I got to give her a hug, and like when I hugged her, like we just fit. Like, oh, it was great. And you, we, we, um, we both have names that start, our middle names both start with L. And, um, you know, as you continue, that's all the deeper your conversations have gone, but you're, you're becoming more and more attached to this person, and you're identifying with them more and more and more. And then you're like, okay, well, we should probably just talk about God some Thing because he's important to me. Uh, so tell me about your, your faith. What, what are you talking about? Why are you going to be all churchy on me? You do your thing, I'll do my own thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, Aaron, can we talk sometime? Um, I'm curious. I'm in this relationship for the last, like, six years, and I'm... I'm... I'm thinking maybe I made a wrong choice. I'm not, I'm not 100% certain, but I, I love Jesus. And I, I, he's like, who? And he's like, oh, what do I do? Dump him. <laughs> <laughs> Address the biggies early. This is not rocket science. If you're sitting there like, yeah, duh, Todd, I got this. Awesome. Many people don't. And please don't be swayed. If, if this is a biggie for you, which I pray and I hope that it is, don't compromise. Don't sit there and say, mm, man, well, he, he could spell Bible or she could spell Bible. But maybe God's going to do something. I'm not really certain there, like what's going to happen, but she's not really against me or he's not really against me. Whew. She's pretty cute. He's pretty hunky. Don't, don't compromise on those biggies. How about God honoring communication and ending a relationship? We talked briefly kind of offline last week about this. And um, here's just the, the, the reality is there's not a magic wording that's going to take away awkwardness, um, hurt, um, anxiety. There's just not. And so you need to know that going into it, that there's nothing that you can say that's going to be like, oh, six years of my life, and you're just calling it quits? But you said God's still in control and he's sovereign, so I'm okay with that. That's awesome. Nux, how about that? You know, there's just that... It is what it is, and you need to embrace that. But you also need to come back to this. It is going to be awkward. It is going to be emotional. And I'm okay with that. I can't change that. And it only gets more awkward and more emotional the longer you wait. So as soon as you know this is not the person that you need to be with, you need to have that awkward emotional conversation. It's the most loving thing you can do. Remember, dating is a process used by God for His glory where 
You and others are encouraged, refined, transformed into his image while growing in depth of relationship with another person through a series of, of dates. You're stepping into that conversation. You want to be truthful, you want to speak in love, and you want to be intentional. Not easy to do. Because honestly, there's probably, if it's gone on for six years, if you're being truthful, you've done some things wrong. And you actually might need to apologize. I know this is an awkward emotional conversation, but I've got to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I have not treated you the way that God would want you to be treated. I haven't. I've yielded to you when you've pushed the boundaries in the physical line. I've, I've yielded to what you, your wants are and I've, I've let go of, of my faith in, in a lot of different ways because of pressures that you have applied. It's not your fault. I've allowed that to happen and so I'm sorry. I, ha- I, haven't, I haven't been the man or woman of God that I'm supposed to be. Will you forgive me? No. Yeah. <laughs> but God's doing some cool things in me. And part of that coolness has been a lot of pain. I've seen a lot of mistakes that I've made and I see a lot of changes in my life and honestly as he's dwelling these passions up it's not going the same direction that you are and we need to break up. But Todd, if I say something like that he might get mad or she might get mad and never want to come back to the church ever. Well, true. But is that reason to stay together? I mean, wouldn't you like this? Like, just fast forward 50 years. Wouldn't it be awesome? Hey, Grandma, Grandpa. Oh, yeah. What has kept you and Grandfather together for 50 years? Oh, guilt. I felt really bad. I didn't want to break his heart. Lack of courage. That's, that's what I'd like to say, right? Especially if it's a situ- situation where the person is just, they're not on the same boat spiritually where you are. What if they leave the church? More than likely, they will probably have some big backlash because they're spiritually immature and so they're not able to handle any type of rebuke in a way that they think God is really awesome about that. That's just not, that's not, that's not even on their radar. But you can still speak truth in love knowing that it's going to be awkward and emotional. <coughs> Wrap it up with this. Christ is absolutely in the middle of communications. He's even in the middle of text communication, but holy smokes, people. Guys, never ask a girl out over text. There you go, boom. Okay? Lame. Lame. Never break up with a person over text. Lame. Email's not okay either. It's just not. How you communicate, how you communicate is going to stretch you. It just, it really is. And it should stretch you because we're not perfect. I was thinking about this as I was walking over to, um, uh, to grab an envelope. I was walking over to, to Anderson Camp, or big church area. And I was walking back and I was just thinking, man, God, I don't have it all figured out, but I love, God, that you continually transform me and challenge me like with truthfulness. Like, I, I'm typically not somebody like, how blunt can I, like, let me just go ahead and just tell you something, boom, I, I'm usually easier into that. But he's just worked and worked and worked and worked in me being able to come forward and say, like, I, ha- I have to say something. I cannot sit back. There's some warning signs I just want to talk to you about. Before I'd be like, it's not my business, let me step all the way back out. But if there's, if I have an established relationship with somebody and, and there's some things, I want to, I want to come alongside of them. Not because I'm judging, but I want to come alongside and I want to be truthful. And so he's really been working in me on that and, and being intentional. There's several times like, no, I, I can just ignore it. But as we allow God to transform us, to make us softer people as far as thinking about the other person, how we communicate, as we work on communicating truth clearly and we're very intentional about it, like, hey, this is risky, but I gotta be honest. Do you, would you like to go out on a date? I'd really like to, to pursue because I see these things and you could, would, would you like that? You're putting yourself out there. You're being intentional. That's okay. 
Because if they say no, that's okay. You're still loved, forgiven, redeemed, and have a friend who's closer than a brother. Somebody who will never leave you, never forsake you. I think that's truly incredible. Drop the assumptions, holy smokes, please. If you are in amidst amongst these people, or if you're one of them, where you're constantly like, well, yeah, I think maybe they could. Uh, yeah, I think maybe, I think maybe, I think. Do you know? No. Then be quiet. There you go. I had somebody ask me a question the other day. Hey, so what's your feeling about this thing? Like, my response is, I have a feeling, but my response is, that's not really helpful. I don't know. Go ask these people. Because otherwise, I'm just gossiping, and I'm taking assumptions, and just spread them along. Knock it off. If you're a person who, who constantly is living in the world of assumptions, snap back to reality. Think on what is true. Has he actually said, I want to pursue you? Be intentional. That's tough. And then this is the coolest thing. And I will close with this. Coolest thing. Do, do you understand? You're setting trends that will last a lifetime. This is the coolest thing. Maybe you've never been this way. Maybe you've never been intentional. Maybe you've never been really sensitive with your communication about how it's going to be received. And maybe you've never really been fully truthful. Maybe that's not been you, but you want to make a change. And that's really cool because when you start a new relationship, whatever that may be, if you begin to de do those things, that's the expectation. That is so cool. Yes, you're scared the first time. Oh, man, it's an awkward conversation. Oh, I don't want to. And, but I'm supposed to intentionally. Let's have this awkward conversation. We had this awkward conversation. We worked our way through it. The expectation is whenever there's tension, because you brought it for the first time, you're going to continue to do that. And so now you have this positive encouragement for you to continue to behave in a way that brings God great glory. I used to love, love and hate when I would move. Every two or three years, the thing that I, I loved about it is nobody knew me at the new place. And so when I moved from Texas to Iowa, and in Texas I was somebody who it didn't take much to make me mad and take my racket and smash it all over the tennis court, and I was like, man, get away from him. He is uncool. When I moved to Iowa, I could say, nobody knows me here. Well, Todd, how did you get to be so controlled and stuff like that? Well, just last week when I was in Texas, I wasn't, but I'm making a conscious choice because this is new, and you don't know me. In a relationship, it's new. You don't know me, and so I'm going to behave this way that I'm called to behave, and now you set the trends for the rest of your life, and that is really, really, really cool. Because I guarantee you, if you can be truthful and love and intentional in your communication, your marriage if God allows you to go that far, will be awesome. It'll be incredible. That foundation is something that many couples don't have and many are in counseling trying to figure out how to do those three things. So start the trend today. It's so cool. It's a new you. It really is a cool, cool thing. Let's pray.